This is a diamond heavy duty fretsaw, manufactured by the late JD Woodward. I bought this one a, about a month ago and spent some time setting it up. So the video is about just going through some of that and a little bit of woodworking history. Like. The saw looks kind of bulky, but uh, in fact it's very precise. You look at this lettering, it's about I don't know, 20 mil high and some of it's 2 mil across. Sounding like the original advert for the machine, a variety of blades can go in it. So you can put pin blades in, you can put pinless blades in, you can put little junior hacksaw blades in it, or you can even use a bit of old bandsaw blade and stick that in it. Uh, I'm not sure why, but it, pretty much everything that could be out of alignment on the saw uh, was out of alignment. So I started with this top bracket and that's a simple case of just undoing the bolts and pulling it back into place. The saw is bolted down and the rear spring assembly can be a little bit complicated but uh, the newer models have a method to make the arms spring up if a blade breaks and that involves the top spring there being tucked into the back of the arm by a groove so you have to assemble it all at once which is quite tedious really the only point of a knob there is to tension the blade the arm had a little bit of play in it so after a while I, I noticed that this was loose so I gave it a, a couple of turns and tightened it up it doesn't want to be too tight uh, otherwise the arm won't swing up properly and it will you know, get a bit hot I guess so just just tight enough to keep the arm straight uh, as well as not cutting on an angle the important thing is that the, the saw cuts straight so you, I've just refined this over and over whilst correcting up the various bits and pieces on the saw a lot of the saws you can buy I, I don't think they really work as such because if you can't cut straight, you can't actually cut anything. Um, I remember showing this saw to a carpenter and he was just blown away at how you can spin a piece of wood at 270 degrees on its own axis and just carry on cutting. It's really, it's quite a buzz actually when you just cut like that. I'm cutting pretty slow here, I usually cut quite slow and just follow the line. Uh, Save making a mistake, but it will cut fast if you want it to. The assembly for the lower blade holder was so far out it was knocking against the frame. A little bit more detail to undo the bolts and stuff here. You have to take the, the birch table off and then do it. But uh, it, it's all straightened out again as well. These Nikola Hobbies blades are pretty standard to get hold of. I tend to use 7s or 10s because they'll cut 3 quarter inch pine fairly easy enough. So I don't do really fine work. Table's leveled with this bolt here. Very simple adjustment. If you want to cut on an angle, say for I'd do a dovetail, then you can move this slider here and it'll give you I don't know, up to about 45 degrees. The red box holds the dry belt. And then on the other side you have the variable speed control. Next to that, a takeoff for flexible drive shafts. And 
and then next to that is the I think induction motor which is 375 watts it doesn't get hot and can run all day Hope you like the video. Pierce fret work takes a little bit of getting your head around because uh, it's time consuming. But if you like traditional, then the results are quite rewarding. I like making boxes, large or small. Over the years, I've mostly done woodwork, even from school. I've worked for a veneer factory. Supplied a pine shop, cut timber for a yard, and been trained as an antique restorer in Windsor. <laughs>